Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Anessa and I am an author from Toronto, Canada and I publish under the pen name Anne Sage. If you are new to this channel and this is your first time here, first time seeing me um, and hearing me kind of blam on about authorship and writing and all the good stuff, um, then you should know that on this channel I share my experience after having published 20 books and counting. We're actually approaching 23, but some of them are bo books I've ghostwritten and some of them are books that are no longer published. But I've published a lot in my lifetime and I've uh, worked both um, as a trad author and an indie author. And so I try to share all of my experience from uh, both of those viewpoints and just years of being in the publishing industry on this channel with everybody who is either getting into writing or getting into a new genre of writing or just needs a new perspective <laughs> to get them in inspired and encouraged. I am also a uh, designer. I am a cover designer. Um, I am currently illustrating a picture book. Uh, so there's a lot that I do that is creative and not just writing related. So I tried to share those as much as I could. Um, one of the things that I like to do um, is review tech. Um, and I like to review um, tech and tools and planners and all that kind of good stuff that helps authors. Um, and it's uh, tools that help me. Uh, and that changes. <laughs> so I'm sure you would see that much like my outlining and my plotting and my planner systems, a lot of the tech that I use rotates and I like to try things out. I like to try new things. I like to be more productive. I like to find ways that help me be more productive in my work because there's only so much time in the day that you have to do creative work. Um, and I want to concentrate more on the creative part and less on the kind of trying to make it all work part. And one of the tools that I want to talk about today, or it's a collection of tools because I have many, but it's something that's very important to authors. I think, uh, because there's a couple of things that all authors that I know have. Um, one thing is a ton of notebooks that sometimes they use, sometimes they don't use, a ton of pens that they also sometimes they use and sometimes they don't use. And the other thing we all really, really love and need for our job are keyboards. <laughs> You might have seen if you follow me on like Instagram and other social media that um, I am starting a collection of keyboards here because I keep alternating. I don't keep keyboards around. So if there's a keyboard that I don't use, I don't keep it around. I have one backup keyboard that is not kind of around me uh, at all times. Um, and it's just like a standard Mac keyboard because I do have an iMac that I use and most of my products are Apple. Um, so it's an Apple Magic Keyboard with a number pad and it plugs in. And I only keep it because if any of my other keyboards that are wireless ever die or have like batteries or something is not connecting, I have that backup. When I'm done with the keyboard, if I no longer find that it's functional, I'm not using it, I usually either sell it off, give it away or, or do whatever I need to do with it. But I do like my keyboards. I find that the type of keyboard that I'm working on makes a huge difference for how much work I do, how fast I do it, my um, want to write basically. Um, and that's why I try to write on different things. So sometimes I'll write on my laptop, um, sometimes write on my iPad, and we'll talk about the keyboard there in a second. Um, sometimes I'll write on my free write, my Alpha Smart. Um, sometimes I'll just sit here, write on my iMac, and I'll write here. So there's different places that I do my writing. And I find that switching around where I write, I even narrate sometimes, uh, it helps me stay creative, but it also helps me get rid of the whole um, concept of just like running out of ideas or feeling like um, the work is a job, like the last thing I want to feel is when I sit down to write um, either a book or a short story or I'm working on picture books, whatever it is. Um, if I sit down to write it, I want to be excited about writing it. I want to be creative. I want the words to flow. And the type of keyboard that I use seems to have a lot of effect on that. And so I figured I would share with you the different keyboards. So originally I wanted to do kind of like this kind of chat. Um, then I thought about maybe doing a tabletop so you can see the keyboards. But then I figured if we do this, it just makes a bit more sense and I can kind of chat about the keyboard. I don't, I'm not doing like a full tech review here of every keyboard. I will put links to everything that I have um, in the description so you can check them out and the specifications and all the tech stuff will be there. Well, I will just talk to you about what I like about the keyboards, what I don't like about the keyboards and how I use them and which one I use the most. So since they're all in this general vicinity, we're going to start with the first one and we're going to start with the free write because I'm not going to do a full in-depth dive into this. Um, I, you can see fingerprints. This is 
we'll talk about that in a second. But I did a full review of this. My thoughts on it when I first got it, I got this back in November. So I got this as um, a win for NaNoWriMo. I won NaNoWriMo about like two or three weeks in and I got a discount code for um, free write. So I bought it. It's been on my list for a while. I've been wanting to update my Alpha, my um, Alpha Smart, my Neo 2, uh, because it was bulky, I couldn't take it places. And I got this. And if you want to see that video of my review, I will post it somewhere like here um, in the cards because I've had thoughts <laughs> and I was kind of back and forth about this. So how do I feel about the free write now, a few months in? Spoiler alert, I really like it, but I want to talk about it really quickly if you haven't seen the video. So what is a free write? So a free write, as you can see, I already have like a book queued up on it. Um, so the free write is I'm going to go, you know what, let me turn the lights down just for this section really quickly. So you can kind of see, I think I might just do that periodically. So because this is like getting blown out, um, as you can see, my ring light is in the way. But a free write is essentially a mechanical keyboard. So um, now that you've seen it, we can get back to a regular scheduled programming. Um, <laughs> so it's a mechanical keyboard. It syncs into um, a, like a cloud type service. Um, essentially, you just type away at it um, and it stores it all in here. Um, and when you connect it to Wi-Fi, your files will move on to a cloud and you can download them from there. You can email them to yourself and whatever. Um, so it's an old school digital typer. <laughs> That's all it is. The reason I initially was not sure about it was because I've lost some files. I didn't like the lag on it. Um, the fingerprints on the top of this, whose idea was this to make a really shiny cover for something you touch all the time? I have no idea, but that person should rethink how they design products. It's got like a ink screen, e-ink, I think it's called screen. So like kind of similar to what you would have in like a Remarkable um, or your Kindle Paperwhite book. I think, or something like that. It's a very similar kind of screen. It is literally an old school typewriter. So I don't know, I'm going to age myself, but back in the day when um, kids used to be taught how to use typewriters in school before computers like were, you know, an everyday thing, this is the kind of thing that they would get. It wouldn't be so cute. It wouldn't be so little. It would be like the Alpha Smart. It would be a, a bulky kind of thing that you would learn to type on um, and you would perfect your typing and get faster and all that nonsense. That's basically what this is. So I really like it now because I have found that so far I've written two and a half books on this um, and I write really fast on this thing. I don't know what it is about the keys. They are very, very soft. Um, they don't have that clickety clack of a typewriter. They have a little bit of it, um, but they've got a bounce back and I really, really enjoy that. And I find that because there's no connection to internet, um, there's nothing else I can look at. Uh, it helps. It really helps with my productivity. And I know it's expensive and it's not for everybody. It's definitely not a budget friendly purchase. Um, it's a splurge. It's not. It, if you don't have a budget for it, please, I can guarantee you this will not make you the next like Stephen King. It's just a machine. So don't spend your money there. Get an Alpha Smart. You can get them for 40 bucks even cheaper probably secondhand on ebay um for me if like i've i could afford the time to buy something for myself and i wanted to invest something in myself and my business i haven't really done too much of that for my writing um most of the tech that i have um i either got to work <laughs> back in the day or somebody gifted it to me or it was out of necessity because something else broke i've never gotten out and splurged on myself and on my writing um and so i wanted to do that because I was proud of how far I come. I think at that time I finished my 20th book and it was a big number. And so I figured I will get this. I love it. <laughs> I do really like it. I still have beef with it. Um, it does tend to restart sometimes annoyingly. Um, not mid when you're writing, but sometimes it takes a while to start it out. The lag, I'm used to it now. I do find I make more spelling mistakes, which is kind of frustrating, but I write faster on it. And yes, I know that I can turn off um, like different apps on my, on my computer or on my laptop. And I know that there's other apps I can install that will make it distraction free, but I just find it's not the same. I find having this designated little thing works for me. So if you want to see that video, check out the cards so that's kind of like um my one writing it's more of a tool it's not so much a keyboard i call it a keyboard because it, 
doesn't do much. Um, and I'm turning around, not just because I'm awkward, by the way, I'm turning around because I'm grabbing the next keyboard. And the next keyboard is, so I will connect it. I don't want my computer to, um, no, not my computer on. Well, there's that. But the next uh, keyboard that we have, so this one here, this is the Epo Maker. Um, it is the RT100. I had to look behind. So let me dim this for a second so you can see kind of the color is pink <laughs> of course as you can see very pastel -y here um but it's very pink it's got different shades of pink i did not make it this way this is how the keyboard came i'm a huge fan um so so you can see me a bit better why do i like this keyboard so so much so first of all the kicks on it so the back legs on it um that are like in the back here they are the exact height that I needed to be when I'm typing. So I haven't had any wrist issues. They used to have wrist issues before. I have not had any wrist issues when I started using this. The clickety clack, let's turn this off so it's not annoying. Okay, how satisfactory is that? Uh, that is, I think these are called um, flamingo switches that they have here. So they are less loud than like a blue switch or brown switch, but they still got a good click. And they have a really bouncy kind of feel to them. Um, it took a while to get used to it because I was used, I had a different keyboard before. This was not great. I had a different keyboard before. It took a while to get used to it, but I just love the sound of this one. Um, it, I like that the space bar says I need more space. How cute. Um, I like uh, the the shift here. Um, so it's got like a little, whoop, whoop, whoop. can you hear that? So um, this is good for like volume, if you like to play music, so you can go like press play, pause, all of that stuff. I don't listen to music when I write. Um, I have like zero sounds. It's very odd, but that's just the way that I like to work. Um, I really like that it's got this little monitor here. So this monitor here, you can upload like a little um, GIF on it. And I have Karomi dancing around and that's kind of there. It'll also show you the battery life. It'll show you the uh, weather if you have it um, set to your um, place of residence. Um, it will show you your CPU, which it will only show you CPU, I find, if you use a PC with a Mac. It's a bit of a pain in the butt, so I just never updated, obviously date and time, all of that stuff. But it's just a cute little addition. Um, I like how it looks on my desk and I have it in conjunction with this cloud pillow wrist support and kind of together, they just make me happy. Um, and so that is kind of my main keyboard when I'm working on this big thing. Now, my other keyboard that I use when I'm working on the iMac is this one. Here. This is just a regular Mac, um, Apple, Magic Keyboard. So why do I use this one and not just the Epo Maker? So I use this when I am designing. So when I'm designing, I actually have a tablet that I use a design tablet. I don't know if you know this, but I used to have a giant, giant 24K, like 24 inch 4K design tablet here. Now, since I have made a shift in my career to concentrate more on coaching clients for who are writing, um, so I am a book coach also, um, and concentrating more on just like writing, ghostwriting, um, basically words, <laughs> and less on the design part of it. Um, if I'm doing illustration, I do it on my iPad. Um, I have found that I don't need such a giant screen anymore. So I packed that away for now. I still have it. It's packed away. I am now back on my older Huion tablet that doesn't have a screen display. It's literally just a pen tablet um, that connects to your computer so you can kind of uh, draw so you're not using a mouse. Obviously, when you're designing, it's a lot more preferable to have this. Um, I don't like the shortcuts in it. It comes with shortcuts. It's not enough shortcuts. I got used to using shortcuts on the keyboard, but because the, the keys are raised on the Apple Maker, it's a little bit difficult to just do combinations and do them fast while you're also like drawing and painting um, and digitally working on stuff. Um, and so I pulled this baby out. So that's another keyboard that kind of lives on my desk. And now for the next view. So I did say that I want to talk about my keyboard on my iPad. So hello, there we go. 
So this is my iPad. It's an iPad 10. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to like illustrating on an iPad. And so I didn't get the iPad Pro. Um, I didn't go all out. This was on sale. And so I got it. Um, and I do love Procreate. It turns out that Procreate is my job. Um, and so now, even when I work on covers, I kind of work on a combination of using Photoshop, obviously stock photos, um, digital illustration, but I also pull stuff into Procreate and illustrate from scratch and pull that into my covers, uh, which is a fun little thing. But I also wanted to scrap using my laptop when I'm on the go. So when we travel, what I tend to pack with me is my laptop, sometimes my free write, sometimes another machine, <laughs> my Kindle. Like it's just, it's a lot of stuff coming with me. And so I figured I am currently using just Dabble for all my writing. Um, it is online. It can connect to different machines. So it can connect to your iPad, to your computer, to your laptop, anything. And so I figured I already have this, then I can illustrate and write. Um, I mean, how much writing do I really do on vacation? Not that much. Um, and I can do it all in one go. And so I ended up getting this keyboard for it. So I got a case um, that came with a keyboard. It's pink, it's cute, it matches everything. Um, and it is really, really nice, actually. It's got a click in here. So it's got a bit of a click. Um, it is comfortable enough to write in. Like I said, um, the amount of writing that like I would do on this thing is probably like what, half an hour, maybe an hour a day if I'm traveling. If that sometimes, you know, if I'm like on a beach, just, you know, having like mojitos and just relaxing and tanning and being sunburned, I'm not gonna wanna type so much, but I do like this. Like it's got like a faux leather um, folio to it. The layout of the keys is very nice. It's magnetic, so it hooks up to your iPad on a magnet, so it's very slim. The only thing I don't like is there's nowhere to put your Apple Pencil. Um, and I have kind of a bulky one because I've got, I don't know if I have it here, I do have it here, but I have, um, like a little, I think, I don't know, what would you call this? Like a place to park my fingers when I draw to make it more comfortable for drawing. Um, and so it's bulky, so I don't have anywhere to put it, but I did end up getting one of these, um, holders. It's essentially like, a a, a little notepad for, um, for your Apple Pencil and it hooks around on the elastic band and that's enough for travel. Because at home, this just kind of lives on my desk and I take it around the house. When I'm illustrating, when I'm working, um, I use this also to read comic books on that I borrow from the library, Libby app. So there's a lot. Um, and the beauty of this, and this is kind of my newest addition to my keyboard collection. And the last one that we have on the list, I promise, because this video is getting long. Uh, but the iPad integrates with this beauty. So lower the lights. Oh my gosh. Will you look at this? It's a flipping typewriter. It's a digital kind of wireless typewriter keyboard. It even has functional knobs on the side. So you can switch. Um, so this knob here connects you to your choice of tablet or phone. Um, and so I would use this and I would take my tablet and I pop it into this top section here and it would just sit on top of it uh, like a screen and I would pull up my dabble. Listen to that. Okay, so this one here, it controls volume. This one here controls, this knob controls the connection. Like I said, um, it came with like an alternate color on this, but it's pink. Of course. Um, I don't know why I have such just pink is my thing. I don't know why. I wear mostly just black, except today I have some color, but for the most part I wear black, gray, um, and white. And my office, as you can see, is just super kawaii and pink, but it's a passion. Uh, but listen to the sound. It sounds exactly like an old school typewriter, right? Um, and it even is made to look like it. It's got like similar features, designs, like all of that. Um, and I just think it is literally like the way it sits on my desk. Um, it's just in the corner there with the iPad behind it on a stand. And it looks like, like an old typewriter. And I feel like 
such an author. <laughs> but I have it. It's so cheesy, I know. But I got this um, because A, I really like the visual and I'm a sucker for a good visual. Uh, B, because I really wanted a typewriter. Like I wanted a real typewriter, but I figured that was a waste because then what am I gonna do? Read through the type pages and import them or pay somebody to import them into digital form? What a pain in the butt. Um, so I figured this is the best of both worlds. And also I'm gonna dedicate this. So when I work on this now, I only work on it when I work on my passion projects. So right now my two current passion projects are things that I'm not signed on contract with or I'm not ghostwriting. And those are the nonfiction that I'm working on, on how to write cozy mysteries. And that I'm going to have a date for that pretty soon. I'm going to be finishing it off in May. So May is dedicated to this nonfiction to finish it off, polish it off, get it ready. And then I can have a release date and start marketing and looking for ARC team members. So if you want to get an advanced copy um, and you feel like leaving a reading it, leaving a review, if you're looking for something like this, then um, stay tuned because I'm going to have information on that or sign up for my newsletter because that's going to be really fast. It's below in the link. Um, but my second passion project is the thriller that I'm also slowly chipping away at very, very slowly because I've had a lot deadlines recently but i am planning to dedicate more to it obviously the picture book is a passion project but when my it's drawing so it has nothing to do with this but i just love sitting down on this little typewriter with my ipad attached to it and working on my passion projects like they they feel even more like passion projects then because i can picture myself like in an old dim study you know like with like a long extended cigar or something <laughs> like it just feels very um very like atmospheric and I think it's been really helping me get excited about all these projects and it's been helping me disassociate like these types of projects from my work projects and from just general computer work and that's why all of these keyboards aren't around so <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kind of piled everything over there. So that's basically it. These are all of my keyboards. So we had one, two, three, four, five, five keyboards. Um, that's a lot, right? I didn't even count my answer smart. So six, if you count my answer smart, but for the most part, um, that is essentially what I use. Uh, what kind of keyboards do you like? So do you have any favorites of these? Uh, first of all, tell me in the comments if you've lasted this long. Um, and do you have a favorite keyboard or do you have a keyboard that you want me to try out? Because I'm always open to more keyboards to try. So uh, make sure you comment below. Let me know. As always, thank you so much for being a part of this community. Thank you for subscribing and for watching the videos and interacting with me. I love hearing from you guys. And I hope you guys have an absolutely magical weekend. I hope you stay magical. And I will see you next week for another fun video. Bye.